Hello, I'm Agar, the head of Bioinformatics and NGS Analysis, Department of Genetics at Hadassa Medical Center. I will talk here in this video about pathological short tendon repeat analysis by long read sequencing in affected individuals. I want to disclose that I'm also a formal employee in Genix, which is the tertiary analysis platform that we use at the hospital to analyze NGS data. Pathological repeat extensions arise from normal existing polymorphic repeats. They are unstable as they, they change their size between one generation to another, with longer repeats cause more severe and earlier onset of disease. Also, there is variable phenotype reflecting differences in repeat sizes. Overall, there are a few dozens of known pathological repeat expansion loci. These repeats can be found in coding regions, but also in non-coding regions, including introns and regulatory regions such as promoters. The nature of the repeat sequence makes it impossible to perform standard PCR, and so repeat-primed PCR was developed for each known pathogenic repetitive gene. TPPCR, in short, uses primers that anneal to the repeat sequence to obtain multiple products correlating with the repeat size. This provides better amplification of the repeat. Another approach would be you to use NGS analysis to detect these expansions, but as you know, short read whole genome sequencing will be limited to detect expansions that are smaller than the read length, failing to reliably detect long reads expansions. Common clinical practice today would be to refer a patient to a specific single gene repeat prime PCR due to a clinical suspicion. We can see here three different individuals that were tested positive using this method to SCA3, Fragile X syndrome, and Canovas. The major drawback of this approach is that there are multiple diseases of patholo pathological expansions with overlapping clinical presentation, and so individuals are subjected to one test after the other if they are tested negative. Looking forward, we want to allow a single test for all the pathogenic expansions that are known using long read sequencing to overcome the size limitation of short reads. For this, we performed a proof of concept project. We took nine affected individuals with a no repeat expansion disorder with different disorders as can be seen here and subjected them to long read sequencing. The genotyping of repeat regions was performed using the Straggler software. Gladly, all repeat expansions were captured precisely and moreover, the long read sequencing enables sizing of large repeats where the molecular test has failed to do so. In addition, long reads whole genome sequencing enable the detection of STR sizing in 30 different loci in each individual. Light blue represents normal, orange represents premutation, and red represents the full expansions that were detected. As you can see here, also no calls were obtained. This, these are in gray, and it is probably due to low read depth at, at these regions. The Straggler software also produces nice plots, allowing to assess the read distribution for the different repeat sizes. The reads in the normal range are found in the light blue area, and reads with full expansions are in the pink area. We see here plots for affected and for normal individuals. Those nice plots also capture the repeat instability feature of repeat regions, with reads displaying variable repeat length. This can be seen here for myotonic dystrophy caused by the DMP expansion in the DMPK gene. To conclude, this is a proof of concept work showing that long read sequencing by Oxford Nanopore is able to reliably determine repeat expansion sizes in affected individuals. We plan to test more individuals with other expanded genes. The Straggler software will also be integrated into Genix analysis to simplify STR visualization and analysis. Overall, we predict that one day we would be able to offer one test to all types of variant, including repeat expansions. With this, I want to thank you for listening and to thank my colleagues at Hadassah Medical Center and to the Oxford Nanopore team for helping us analyzing the data.